Welcome to 2230, your source for in-depth analysis of pressing issues in Asia. Today, we're diving headfirst into a hot-button topic that has recently graced the halls of Singapore's parliament, money laundering. But before we get into the nitty-gritty, make sure to hit that like button, share this video with your friends, and subscribe to our channel for more engaging content like this. Don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comments below. Now, you might have heard about the 2.8 billion Singapore dollar money laundering case involving 10 foreign suspects of Chinese origins. During a recent parliamentary session, non-constituency member of parliament, Mr. Leong Mun Wai, raised a crucial question. He said, and in relation to the amount of money that has come into our system and the potential amount of profits that the banks can make from it, we must have penalties that are proportional to the potential profits. This statement raises a fundamental issue are the penalties for money laundering in Singapore adequate, especially when the stakes are this high? Let's break it down. When the commercial crime department or the police asks banks to freeze ill-gotten money, it doesn't mean that the money is just sitting there, gathering dust. Singapore, being a major financial center, is known for its dynamic financial sector. Banks have the potential to use these laundered funds as capital, effectively generating more income. But is this a loophole in the system? Mr. Leong Man Wai seems to think so. He's essentially asking, is the government sitting idle while banks profit from the 2.8 billion Singapore dollars? He's also raised concerns about the government's response. The question arises how effective is the whole of government approach, led by Ms. Indrani Raja? Is it enough to prevent banks from exploiting the situation further? The investigation of money laundering perpetrators can take a considerable amount of time one year, two, or even five. During this period, the forfeiture can generate more significant sums of money in the form of additional income for banks. This amount could surpass the original 2.8 billion Singapore dollar forfeiture. Moreover, we have to consider the potential for even more money to be unearthed, along with additional bank earnings. As reported by the mainstream media, Mr. Leong asked if fines imposed on banks in money laundering cases are proportional to the amount of profit they could make from holding these funds. It's a crucial point should banks not only return the ill-gotten money but also the additional earnings they've made from it? So, what do you think? Is Mr. Leong right in his concerns, or do you have a different perspective? Let's continue this conversation in the comments section below. Don't forget to hit that like button, share this video with your friends, and subscribe to 2230 for more insightful discussions on Asian news and politics. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next video.